Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is Steve. I'm throwing up another video to kind of show you some of the newer changes I've added to the website. Um, it's going to be kind of similar to the last video, but there are a lot of newer things I've been adding. I've been going along and making newer changes here. Um, I came up with some things here. I found these are some new tools I downloaded called Sumo Me. That actually I'll show you if you click right here for example. It keeps track of like what's going on and how many people have viewed your page. So if you haven't checked out this tool, I would definitely check it out. It's called Sumo Me. Right here, Sumo Me. See it? And this is really cool because it can keep track of what people are doing on your website. So you can kind of figure out what's going on. And I'm going to refresh this because I know if I... Well, actually, if I go back here, I can probably get it right here. If I click this, show heat maps. This will show people where they've actually clicked on in your actual... You can see different areas that people clicked on. I noticed a lot of people are clicking on the Commodore 64, Atari, and GTA stuff, which tells me a lot of my traffic is still coming from my YouTube channel, since that's kind of the, the basic videos I have out there. And but you can kind of scroll down here, and you can see anywhere else that they might have clicked on. Like I saw stuff down here, for example. So that's just some some of the things. Anyways, I'm going to go into the website now and show you some of the things. So a lot of things been going on here. I've obviously gone back and I refaced a lot of the graphics, added in some new CSS styling, so it looks a lot prettier. And um, you already know about the store, I've added that from last time, so if you want to check it out, you just go here and click on the shop link, and it'll take you to the store, which is still not active until I can sign up for a membership, so bear with me on that when I wait for my membership to end and decide where they're going to kind of take me from there. But if you want to check it out here, you can go in here and click on the catalog. And you can kind of see some of the stuff I have on here. Mostly just floppy disks and a couple books. There's a couple pages of them here actually. But I'll keep adding more stuff as I go along here. So there's actually a lot of software I do have here. But anyway, it's just kind of a startup store. So not sure it's going to go anywhere right now. But I know you guys are interested in the Commodore 64 stuff. So let's get with it. So, I mentioned this before, but this is going to be a what's new category, where it's all, or um, a titling, where it's always going to show everything that's new that's going on with the site. I'll try to add it in here and let you know. Um, you guys know you're following me on the C64 game scrolling map, so I added the videos here. And if you want to click there, you can just go to this page here, and it'll take you right there. Um, this is kind of some of the things I added into this page, too, to kind of explain like where the scrolling came from this was one of the first videos I saw that kind of inspired me to want to do my own scrolling if you click here you can kind of view it um, here's the all the videos I've actually created for that game or at least most of them and they go from the, the most recent to the oldest as you go down the page there there's the vertical scrolling map raster interrupts I kind of broke it all down explained a little bit what was going on in each section there so you want to check that out you're welcome to check that out I also added this new Facebook Facebook um, plugin so you can go here and you can actually leave comments and I'll post them right on to this Facebook page which is actually my Atari page so if you click here it's my Atari page but I have a commenter page so I need to probably swap that out for later but anyway you want to check it out this is a pretty cool Atari page though a lot of um, a lot of people catching on to this one I put some stuff here about the Oculus Rift and uh, Map in, anyways, you know, the commoner map in the Atari and Atari graphics and stuff like that. So, those are some of my favorite books, but, anyways, let's go back here. So, I click on the back links here to kind of go to the next steps. So, other than the scrolling, I explained also that this website is geared toward the college students. Um, Here's something I added. I know a lot of you probably know where this is, but some of the people that come to this page that may find it from Google may not know that this actually exists. And the last time I showed this demo, I watched the video. It didn't really work, so I'll, I'll actually show it to you right now. So if I click here, C64 Games, for example, and here's uh, the demo. I'm going to replace it with this current one I'm recording right now. But these are all the different screenshots of all the code and everything I ever have on all my discs basically and there's tons and tons of stuff here so if you want to go through all this I mean this is only one page alone here these are a lot of different screenshots and I got the you know the, the graphics the displays to show you kind of show you what the pictures look like but there's a lot of really interesting cool stuff in here if you want to check it out 
and each category is broken down and also down here if you click on the letter here it'll take you right to that that section so it's a little bit faster to kind of you know bounce around wherever you want to go there so get back to the main one here so you break them down from C64 uh, graphics if you click on the graphics one you'll be able to see all the graphics and once again if you click on the, the color links here it'll take you to you know whatever is going on with that particular section there so you can kind of see and oh I didn't show this to you also if you want to see I don't have the downloaded code examples I'm hoping to get those put in here but that's going to take a lot of work and I don't have um, a device to transfer all these over to the um, my PC I bought a board before and it didn't work very well um, I should have debated it and had it returned but I didn't and I kept it I paid sixty dollars and then eventually I decided not to to utilize it but anyways, these are all the code listings. You can't really copy them or anything. Maybe later I'll make it so you can have a copy button. You can copy the code or something like that. And you could just paste it into WinVice for those who are using the emulator. But anyways, these are just, um, as I mentioned, again, some of the different examples and, you know, all the programs I have on my disk. Some of these are by myself. Some of these are just people I found. Um, library. What I mean by library is... Um, back in the days when you wanted to get code you would actually go to the library and you could get books there and take them you know check them out and learn from them this is where all my my early beginning started was just going into the libraries and finding books and just typing up all kinds of crazy programs and these are just the hundreds and hundreds of programs I have there so that's the graphics one all right and then here's the the demos I guess I won't click all of them but you can check them out if you want here's the, the machine language utilities I guess I'll click on the machine language one this one doesn't really have a whole lot in it but it just shows you some of the examples and stuff you could do with the semi language maybe later I'll have descriptions on them uh, we'll see you know how popular that becomes or not but these are all the, here's here's one really cool one, a color routine change the color bars, the raster bars on the Commodore 64, and just the different things you can kind of, you know, learn from a semi language. Here's one I did where I kind of mixed up the, the lettering on the screen. There's a different kind of um, color display, randomized bitmap, that was kind of a weird one. So, yep, so there's um, the semi language, or machine language. And this one's really interesting here. There's also one for Vice if you want to check out the downloads I have. I put them all in here, accessible right here. If you want to download, click this button. Hopefully it works. It'll download them here and you can kind of view them. They opened up right here, for example. Oh, it's still downloading them, I think. I don't know what it did there. Right there. So it downloads all these D64 files. These are all the ones I I had in those days. Um, a lot of the examples I came up with, I put them in here, so you can check those out. And um, the next thing here, this one's really cool. One here, this has got all the actual, the real cool games that I found on the Commodore 64, in the books and just pretty much everywhere where I searched around. And some of these had some pretty good graphics. In those days, you would just type in stuff and just hope that it would be a good looking game never really know what's going to look like half the time because they didn't have the money in those days to really print you know graphic displays to really show you what each demo looked like they just kind of you know just kind of go on your own um, that's a game I made right there a long time ago um, here's some different graphics ones so if you want to just check them out go ahead and yeah just check them all out this is really cool if you go down here I think there's some better ones down here There's some different aliens there, sprites, you can see some of the sprites. There's an Elisa. There's some graphics, some um, 3D graphics, and just the different ones that is available there. So, yeah, hope you guys um, want to check those out, and we'll kind of move on to the next section here, because I didn't want to go too much on that one. I showed this one. This is the last video where I was working on email marketing. 
I'm probably going to can get response right now because they really haven't gotten me any leads lately and they really, I have, I have much still to learn about marketing, let's put it that way. Here's the, um, the PDF. If you do enroll in this list right here, um, it didn't load. Let me just reload this. For some reason it wants to load that bottom picture all the time. Right here, if you want to enroll here, then you'll get this um, copy of this um, little example showing you how to design a little website and stuff you might want to know how to build a simple, it, it would be necessary to build a simple website, you know. I just added some examples in here, so if you want to check that out. I still got this one on here. This is about increasing web traffic, but I might change this one. This is a program I bought a while back. Most of the stuff I've learned, I probably don't even need this program anymore because this is like older example because I've learned a lot of different new techniques and it probably changed. Um, this is the YouTube projects page. If you want to click here. This is for people who want to get their, their website exposed and want to, you know, get some traffic to it or whatever. I can be, I mean, I don't really have a lot of traffic, but if you, if you want to, I mean, I, I think I get enough decent traffic. So if I go here, for example, these are kind of my traffic statistics you can see here. Um, these were when I was using advertisement, so they're not exact, exact traffic, but I'm looking at pretty close to 100 hits a day. I'm hoping to increase that, but I have no idea if it's a common market is so short or if there's something else I still need to do. And for a while there, my website really wasn't loading very quickly, so I had to go back and change some things up. And I got the pages speeding up now, so I think we'll be good there. This is a jQuery mobile. I may move this to an intersection. I don't know if I need all that much in here. Teach you more about website, how to design your own banners, Excel stuff. This is just my older stuff on here still. .NET stuff. So, the Atari, I've worked on the Atari section too a little bit. Um, I still need to work on some of these displays. This display is kind of out of whack right now. But I added um, some new videos here. And I, I talked about this on the main page. This is just some Atari videos I found on YouTube that I thought were really interesting. And here's a, a maze generator. This one was pretty cool. Somebody created a, an actual maze generator. It's actually got few lines of code too so if you click here there's a code at. I think it's in here somewhere right here's a code watch how short this thing is that's all the code for that entire maze that's pretty cool I thought so this is the old uh, Atari example program I had in here how to build your own little redefined character set game and just kind of where I learned some of the techniques and it kind of breaks it down step by step there it's for Atari fanatics and this breaks it all down from all the Atari sections um, oh this is a, this is the one I wanted to show you this is a, the new Atari page I created I got Nolan Bushnell here um, I enjoy this video a lot so I threw it up here and then just some of the He's the um, he's known as the founding father of the game, um, gaming industry. He he founded the first original game that actually became you know a hit, which was Atari 2600. Of course, they had this year's you know machines out there at the times, and I forget some of the other machines that they had, but Atari was the big one for the longest time. And then this just shows you step by step how to basically build your own simple graphics three maze, which is basically like a hit collision kind of thing. So if you want to check that out by Atari people, definitely check that out. And these are just other links. Um, I'm just kind of skipping around here a little bit. This is the Atari Semi language. These ones became pretty popular. People were interested in how to design their own graphics. And this is a game I was working on for a while. And Atari uh, semi language. So, emulators. These are the Atari emulator videos I have on my YouTube channel. And if you want to check those out, they're all right there too. So, and of course, People love the Commodore 64 stuff, so I revamped the Commodore 64 page. 
I showed this last time, I'll show it again. I added some newer links in here. I added a scrolling game here, and I think um, this one, CB and PRG Studio, was new. So we'll just start and click on that one first, I guess. CB and PRG Studio, this is the one I used to build that scrolling game in. And this is just an example I found on YouTube where somebody shows an example of how to get set up using CB and PRG Studio. And these are just some of the examples I created for screenshot showing how to set up a simple editor and stuff like that. Um, you know, we're here. We saw this one earlier. This was a scrolling game. I'll click on it again just to show it to you. This is the one you saw earlier with this, the scrolling examples. I just, that's the page where it goes to. And then I have a C64 tutorials. I changed this one a lot. This one, I think I did. Yeah, these these are the Pitfall 2 hacks. If you want to check those out, you can go here. I've seen this page getting a lot of hits, so this is all about the different hacks I put in the game. And Oh, some of these links I need to fix. This is actually supposed to be... Um, I'm going through and I'm changing it, but I actually have the game hack one now. And I don't have this directory anymore. So I'll just show you that real quick. I wanted to show this to you because... This is a pitfall hack, so I threw in some pitfall videos I found on YouTube. This is a long play for Pitfall 2, which is the game that I actually hacked was Pitfall 2. And this was a Pitfall 2 for the Atari 2600, which is where it originally came from, where it all started. And you guys, if you've seen this before, this is that hacking I did for the, the Pitfall game right there. Right there is the big one right there. Yep. And let's go back here. And this is the um, assembly age game development. I'm fixing, you notice these are older menus. I'm still replacing these with my newer menus as I go along. And these are just older pages I need to update. This is all the code for this, um, the original game I built in 1992 for the Spaced Out which I remodified for the scrolling demo that you saw earlier. This is all the, I think it's most of the code, if not all of it. And you can actually copy this too if you want, you know, and paste it wherever you wanna. If you wanna use it for your own stuff, you can paste it and use it. It's, it can be copied, no problem. And, Let me see. Okay, so I'll just go back to the other one. So, Pitfall 2 hacks, you saw that earlier. I kind of skipped over to that one. And C64 Studio, this is an older one, but I'll click on it anyway. I'm still updating these links too. This was um, when I used the C64 Studio. It was my first GUI um, Commodore 64 editor that I actually used. And this is just an example program. I show you step by step how to build your own little simple program I think this is the one, let me see this just, oh this just sets it up, I think this is the one right here for the yeah this is the game development one, this is the one that actually helps you create your first I put game development but I should just say demo because it allows you to create this little sprite using sprite pad you know I have a sprite pad tutorial in here somewhere but I know where it is and that's the example it creates as a sprite. And I explain it step by step there. So you want to check that out, you can definitely check that out. And next would be Amiga 500 for those who are interested in Amiga. I created this page and added some Amiga examples I found on YouTube. This is a pretty good one here. It talks all about the workbench and there's he talks about game examples and everything in here, and I kind of explain that right there. Um, here's a, a really cool commercial for the Amiga. I thought this one was really interesting. This is the, the last days at the Amiga factory. Somebody filmed it before the Amiga factory shut down, so you definitely got to check out this video. It's kind of really cool. I'm going to show it to you real quick here. You can see that's the Amiga building as he's walking up. You can tell it's pretty old. 
She's walking right in the door there. This guy actually worked for the Vega at the time. Did you cover the last day up? Well, I don't think they'll yell at me for stealing secrets anymore. And you just kind of see this is the factory. Look at the size of this place. It's massive. Mika was a pretty big selling computer in those days. Had some of the highest quality graphics, 16 bit graphics. Um, let me get to the factory here. Right here. Here's where the production floor was. I think this is it right here. Production here. Yeah, production. This is it. It's a massive place, like a giant warehouse or something. You can see some other examples. They have commoners lying around there. I see some commoners. Commodore. Closing up shop for the last time. So, anyways, if you want to check out a video, go ahead and check it out. And these are just the Amiga games. I had a video here showing Amiga games. And this one got a lot of views, but this was because it was a bad example of how to plug in an Amiga connection. It was a ghetto way of doing it, I guess you could say. But yeah, you can check those out. Um, I added some of my other links in here, so you can kind of get to different pages here. This is just some... Also, most of my YouTube stuff is connected to this website, so you should be able to find it. And that was my my goal is eventually everything I have in YouTube, try to organize it in an easier place to get to stuff and where I can kind of interact with you more. Because you can always interact, um, well, it's probably not in this example, but at the bottom of these pages here, I have the comment section so you can interact with me here on the website too if you want. And on the main page has the Facebook one, so let's go back here. Oh, I went too far back. So I don't want to make this video super, super long, but here's the ebook. If you click on here, it'll show you. Actually, I think it's right here. Yeah, it takes you to. I kind of explain it here, and you can click here. It opens up the PDF for it. This was an ebook I created a while back. Unfortunately, I never really finished it, which is why I set it up for free because I never really had time to go back in and finish it. But it's pretty long. It's actually got five chapters in this one. Now it's got like like 20 some pages or something like that. So, but it opens up into its own PDF window, so you can save it on your computer and look at it, read it later. So yeah, that was the Comma 64 section, and other than that. Everything else is kind of the same. I won't go over to this, but this is Q basic stuff. Um, oh, I did add some newer stuff in this. I forgot to tell you about that. This is how to set up Q basic, which is a um, Microsoft compiler that was written back in the days to write your own basic demos. And they can utilize simple graphics. You can see some bouncing balls in this one. This guy has like an RPG going. And these are some of the bigger popular ones. This is like almost like a Pac-Man kind of look. And this just tells how to write a QBasic game from scratch. And these, are, of course, are the ones I created. I also created this. So if you scroll over here, it enlarges the picture so you can kind of see a bigger view. I've got this on a lot of my pages now, so you can kind of see a bigger. This was a pretty um, graphical game I created back in the days. And yes, I did create all these screenshots. So it took me a long time to put it together. But it was supposed to be a game I was going to work on. Here's my Q basic demo online there so if you want to check that out you're welcome to check that out and we'll go an example of all this this is my dark DG, DG, dark gdk um, you can check that out that's just a i probably can it it's pretty old um, 3d compiler it's written by the game creators but it's not in use they've already abandoned it anyway i just had some videos up there and i threw it up out here but i'll probably take it out later this is some newer stuff I'm working on for those who are into GTA 4. I know GTA 5 is out there, but GTA 4, this is all the code for um, a trainer I wrote back in the days. And I think I need to go back here to get to the main one here. Like I said, my links are out of whack, so I need to really kind of file, fix them. This is something I've been working on today. This is um, explaining how to set up your own script hook be able to write your own Grand Theft Auto 4 
um, hacks or basic view all mods and this is kind of how I broke down some of the stuff like God mode and here's a demo of God mode and I kind of explain it step by step and how it, how you set up your objects and stuff like that so if you want to check that out Grand Theft Auto people you're welcome to do that and maybe later I'll add some I put down here I'll add some maybe GTA 5 because I do have a script hook for 5 here right here I wrote, I wrote it somewhere I forget where I wrote it but, but anyways if you want to check that out that's pretty much what I'm going to leave at the video everything else is just what's already been on here if you want to check that out Excel stuff I won't go into all that the whole idea of this video was just to show you that stuff and of course I've got a site map here I showed this last time but if you click on this it explains um, all the sections I've been utilizing step by step here broken down and that's just basically these menus over here so this is basic which is um, basic right here game development game development right there software business software business and so on so if you want to read that so I hope you guys enjoyed this video but uh, like I said I just made this video so I could probably upload it to that other page so Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day.